Uh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Jonathan and this is our video submission for Lab 8 or the final project and we decided to go with the ATM module um, and this is our flowchart that we were required to submit and the first thing that you should notice is that there's two keys, one at the top left over here that shows the inputs and outputs that will be eventually implemented on the FPJ and also re uh, referenced throughout the rest of this video. And then in the top right you'll see the key continued where it shows the different, uh, some of the different abbreviations for the different sections that the flowchart's divided into. Um, so starting at the begin, we start with our orange starting ending sequence. And as soon as the user inputs their card, um, their debit card, I guess, um, then they'll, they'll, they do that by flipping on the switch 10. As soon as they do that, then the, uh, it will start waiting for the user to input their four digit pin and essentially check the card to see if it's the correct user that has the card. Um, and once they do that, uh, the card will either, their pin will be either be invalid or valid. Let's say it's invalid, they put in the wrong pin. Uh, and then after that, they would have to either, uh, they would, the card would be spat out and they would have to remove it and reinsert their card and try again. However, if the card is valid, then um, it will start saying card accepted and they will have now reach the menu stage where essentially this is our finite state machine. Oh, and I forgot to mention previously that this would be the start of our user interface hardware um, portion where we have our zero through nine keypad represented by switches zero through nine. Those will be used later on as well. But starting going back to the menu, we have five decisions here uh, in our finite state machine that the user can do. They can either go to the withdrawal state, rapid withdrawal, balance check, deposit, or they can finish and exit. Um, if they go ahead and press finish and exit, let's say they didn't want to stay in the ATM anymore, the machine will start to say goodbye until they remove their card. Um, so going back to the main modes, they would uh, have a couple to choose from, four to be exact. And the first one on the left over here would be withdrawal. So it would be if, if they want to withdraw money from their bank account. Uh, once they enter this mode by pressing button two, it will start saying withdrawal in progress and it will wait for them to enter in the amount of cash that they would like to withdraw. Uh, they would do this by flipping the zero switches zero through nine. And then once they're happy with what amount they've entered is, then they can uh, press the button again, press the withdrawal button again. And then what that will do is compare the cash that they entered, the amount that they entered, as well as their current balance in their account. If it's insufficient, so that would be if cash is less than the balance, um, then it would return all the way back to the menu because, and also flash a RGB LED red because they cannot take out more money than they have. But otherwise, if the cash is uh, greater than or equal to the balance, then it will flash the RGB green and also indicate that an LED saying that they can take their cash, and then you'll also get an audio cue. Then the arithmetic, uh, unit will actually subtract the cash and update that balance and then go back to the menu. Going to the next option, uh, if they press button when, they can do rapid withdrawal in progress. Uh, they'll get that audio cue. Uh, and the nice thing about rapid withdrawal is it just gives a flat 100 um, and it will go down into a similar module down here, except instead of comparing cash, it will just compare that flat 100 with the balance and essentially repeat what I uh, previously said. If it's you know not enough in the bank account, it'll return to the menu. Otherwise, it will subtract 100 and update that balance. Okay, going on to the other two states, uh, possible modes. Uh, we could do a deposit um, where we want to deposit money into our bank account. Um, and once they press button three, that will happen and it will start saying deposit in progress. Um, and once deposit mode is activated, it will start to wait for the user to uh, enter in the amount of cash that they would like to deposit, press the button, and then in order to enter the cash, they have to press, press the button one more time. And once that's done, it goes to our update balance module over here inside our database slash cash management unit, um, and it will update that balance. Um, lastly, they have a balance check option where if they press button zero, it will also give them that audio cue. Um, and uh, essentially it will 
display the balance that they currently have and then return to menu once they press it again. Um, and you might notice that a lot of these arrows up top here uh, go back into the menu as well as into the mode that they selected. This is because at any time in any of the other modes, um, the user can go ahead and return to the menu um, if they so want to, if they don't want to do that process anymore. And any time they do that, it will um, give them the continuous auto queue that they are back in the menu. Um, so I think that pretty much sums up the algorithm flowchart. Um, so moving on to the actual FPGA implementation. So you can see it's pretty simple here. Um, we've got our color coded um, sections kind of corresponding to the colors here in the uh, flowchart. So starting with the speaker, this is where we'll get all our audio cues. All you have to do is attach some sort of headphones to that. Um, starting from the bottom left over here, we have our mode selection, um, our four different modes, um, as well as the you know fifth choice that they have over here in orange with the finish and exit and the uh, input card to actually do the starting sequence. And then of course the finish to uh, stop it. Um, and then if you go back over here to the corresponding a green and orange LEDs, um, these essentially correspond to these inputs over here in a way where wherever, whenever we're in a certain mode, it will be indicated by these LEDs. And whenever we have uh, uh, an attempt to get inside the ATM with a certain card, um, the card will uh, either be valid or invalid showing the status of the ATM. Um, and over here we have our um, uh, 10 switches for our 0 through 9 keypad for them to enter in either a pin or numbers of cash. Um, and then over here we have our cash management LEDs where um, 7 and 6 are respectively entering uh, the cash that is entered um, and also the requested cash. These are notifications that uh, depending on whether the funds were insufficient or sufficient that they can either take the cash or that they need to put it in. Um, and lastly, uh, we have our seven segment display, which displays, you know, previous um, transactions, uh, as well as the, the pins that the user enters when they start up, or that the cash that they enter that they would like to withdraw or deposit. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jad and then Albert to go over the actual video demonstration of this project. Thank you. The Hello, my name is Jad Abed. Is entering our passcode in incorrectly. So what we're, we're going to do first is enter in our card, which is switch 10, and we're going to enter in a value of 9661. And as we can see, LED1 lifts up indicating that we have the incorrect passcode. So for another attempt, we're going to take out the card and we're going to put, in, put the card back in, which is switch 10. And we're going to enter in the correct passcode of 0000. As we can see, LED zero lights up and the speaker is saying card accepted. So right now we are in the finite seat uh, portion of the project in the menu and we are going to test the button zero which checks the balance. As we can hear, the speaker is saying balance check is in progress and we can see that LED two is on. The seventh segment display shows us our current balance of $99. Once we are in the back of the menu, we can hear the speaker repeating menu and repeat. And we are now going to attempt to uh, withdraw some money by pressing button 2. As we can hear, the speaker is saying withdraw in progress. And we're going to attempt to take $5,447 out. The red LED indicates that we do not have enough money in the bank and so we're going to check the, the balance and we're going to see no money was taken out. We are now going to press button 1 which is the rapid withdrawal button. As we can hear, the speaker is saying rapid withdrawal in progress, and rapid withdrawal takes out $100. Uh, and if we attempt to take out the $100 with only $99 in the bank, it is going to show our red LED again. And now if we check the balance 
balanced again. We can see that no money was taken out. So next, let's try and deposit some amount of money. Hi, my name is Albert Din. Now, our LD5 shows that we are in deposit mode. So let us try to deposit $400. to press the button, confirm our selection, and then press again to follow through. Our LD6 shows that we are waiting for cash in. Now let's check the balance again and to see if we have $400 more. As you can see, we have $499, meaning that our $400 deposit was success. Now we can try a rapid withdrawal because we have some money now. So we should be able to quickly take out $100 out of the card. We gotta press it again to confirm our selection. Now if we check our balance again, we should be able that we have $100 less. We now have $399, that means we were able to get $100 out of our card. We can try withdrawing a smaller amount of money. Let's try withdrawing $20. we were able to withdraw $20 out of the ATM. Now if we check our balance, we have $20 less, so we are now at $379. Now we can just exit the ATM, but first we need to select the finish and save switch, and then we can take the card out.